All right, so continuing on that line of thought that Kyle has put forward that SQL lives, uh, I would like to introduce uh, my colleague, Lei Chang, uh, who will be talking about the latest addition to the Apache Software Foundation Incubator project by the name Apache Epoch. Uh, which also happens to be a project that could potentially trace its lineage to one of the oldest and you know, best known open source projects, you know, uh, Postgres. So with that, take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, Apache Hawk. So, This is a general of today's talk. So first I will give an introduction about Apache Hawk, including the background and the main features and the, the kernel status and the latest you know, uh, you know, development and the Zulmap stuff. And I also want to talk about a little bit about Tom Turtle, which is which will be ready, you know, in end of this quarter or early April. So finally I will give a, a brief introduction about how to contribute to the community. So talk. This is, a, this is a native, actually, uh, SQL on Hadoop engine. So in order to give you guys you know, a basic sense about uh, how to, what it is, then I will first give you guys a demo. And uh, you can see here, actually, I uh, installed two segments here. So one is a master segment, and the other is uh, actually the slave segment. So, this is a mass segment, and this is the slave segment. So a segment is just like a single node database. So uh, Hawk is like actually multi, multi node Postgres on top of uh, HDFS. So now we have two nodes, then actually you can use Hawk just like Postgres. You can use PSQL connecting to the to Hawk. Then you can show the tables in the database. You can also use Slash uh, L to show all the databases in the uh, in, in this in Hawk. And uh, for example, you can create tables. You can insert insert, insert into P. And uh, you can also execute some queries. And here I also preloaded some uh, uh, TPSH table, line item. You can see, we can execute some complex query here. <coughs> this is TPSH Q1, you know. You can see that there are a lot of uh, operators here. You can, you know. There is group by, there are all, you know, sorting, there are some sum, average, and a lot of stuff. This is a very complex story. You can see that, you know, Hawk can support this very easily. And, uh, okay, so this is a very short demo, you know, show about, you know, how to use Hawk. And, uh, so this slide shows the main features of Hawk. You can see from here, you know, from the left top side, actually, you know, from the end user side, you can, you know, it's a SQL uh, standard compliant. Actually, it's, uh, you know, it's called SQL 92, SQL 2003, and it also support, you know, OLAP extensions. So you can use JDBC and ODBC, you know, connect to Hawk. Then you can actually connect to almost all of your applications. And internally, it has a cost-based optimizer. You know, for next talk, actually, we have. Uh, you know, our colleague Edison, you know, who will introduce uh, Boca, that is uh, the uh, cost optimizer, op optimizer in Hawk. And uh, internally, we have, uh, you know, dynamic, you know, pipeline, actually. This is uh, the internet. Internet is uh, actually the uh, network protocol, actually, connect all of the nodes together. And it supports Hadoop, Hadoop native file formats. And it supports different kind of compression methods for some TV. Snappy, some technology, and a lot of other compression methods. And it also support you know, multi-level partitioning. It is, it is called list-based partitioning, range-based partitioning, and a lot of other partition mechanisms. And it also, you know, transaction 
uh, compliant. It is supported full SEID. So, you know, actually a lot of Hadoop, Hadoop solutions are not supported transactions. Actually, all, you know, from the beginning of this part, you know, transactions. Sometimes you may think that, you know, for analytic workload, transactions are not necessary. But uh, actually, you know, when you do some update or, you know, load to some tables, you will see that the transaction is very, very important. So, you know, for example, if, when you do a load, right, if the transaction fails, sometimes you will get a lot of garbage data. If you don't, if we don't support transaction, actually, you will get, you know, inconsistent data. And uh, finally, you need to remove the garbage data by yourself. So, or manage by your own code. It's, it's a nightmare, actually, for developers. And uh, so, <coughs> and how is you know, support actually petabytes data and it's kind of petabytes scale actually. Internally we you we know we have uh, elastic runtime to support such a large scale. And for from for the tolerance side actually we support multi level for tolerance. You know, there are some if there are some you know segments die and actually uh, you know how can continue you know query the data without you know by removing the segments. And it also support master and uh, uh, master mirroring. If the master uh, you know dies then actually the standby can take, take over. We also support online expansion. So actually, you know, if you want to add a node, actually it's uh, seconds, you know, you can add a node in seconds. It's, uh, you know, you, you do not need any, you know, uh, data distribution. This is very important, you know, for, uh, for uh, management. And, and uh, we also, you know, support actually, it's a multi-tenancy, you know, how, you know, it's kind of multi-tenant, you know, it's caused by, you know, uh, you know, hierarchical resource queues. And actually in 2.0, actually, we introduced this feature. And uh, actually different, you know, business unit can, you know, create different uh, resource queues by managing the CPUs and the memories and the IOs. And it also supports a granular authorization mechanism. And uh, so Hawk is also uh, extensible. So uh, now actually Hawk already supports a lot of formats. And naturally, it supports uh, AO format and parquet format, and, it, uh, and uh, it also supports a lot of other formats, sequence file, error file, JSON, you know, through TXF, that is a pivotal extension framework. And you can also, you know, uh, if you want to support, you know, new uh, format, you can write some plugin to support it. And uh, it, it also supports multi-language user defined functions. It supports Python, Perl, Java, C, and, and many, you know, user defined functions. And uh, actually, it also supports a building in data science library, actually, in the Medley. So this is the uh, main features of uh, Hawk. And uh, this is how we position, actually, Hawk <coughs> compared to, you know, a lot of other, you know, SQL and Hadoop uh, solutions. You can see that, actually, there are two dimensions. The first dimension is about, uh, uh, you know, performance and the SQL compliance. You can see uh, a lot of traditional, you know, data warehouse, for example, Vodica or IBM, you know, or Vodex action. Uh, so, uh, and uh, they, they have, you know, SQL compliant, actually, uh, you know, engine. And uh, actually, it's kind of high performance. And for some new SQL and Hadoop solutions, for example, Impala, Jira, or Spark SQL, or Hive, actually, it has, they have limited, you know, performance. And the SQL, uh, from a SQL center side, actually, typically, if you want to run, you know, TBCH or TBCTS queries, Actually, you know, you need to rewrite the query. Actually, it's not you know standard compliant. And about uh, and another dimension is about uh, the you know priority and uh, the and openness. Actually, Hawk now is uh, Apache project is completely open. And now actually, it's Hadoop native. It, it integrate you know with uh, HDFS, Young, and Barry natively, and it has you know high, it, it is highly scalable. And uh, so from the two dimensions, you can see that Hawk is the only one in the top right, you know, continent. So this is uh, how we position Hawk in the SQL and Hadoop solutions. And uh, this is uh, how, how we typically, you know, deploy Hawk. You know, there are several master nodes, and uh, typically, you know, Hawk has, you know, several master nodes. There's Hawk master, and the other is standby master. And there are a lot of slave nodes, that is computer nodes. On each computer node, you can see that there are one physical uh, segment. And uh, when a query comes, actually, Hawk start a lot of query executors, that is QEs, to execute a query. And on each slave node, you can also see, actually, there is a data node. There's, that is HDFS data node. Actually, typically, you know, we call a data node and the uh, Hawk segment together you know, to 
get better general quality. And uh, in, in a slave node, you can also see there is a node manager. There is a young node manager. It manages the resources of the cluster. So, and on the master side, actually, there is a NEM node, and uh, there is also a catalog service. Currently, the, the catalog service is uh, co-located with the hot master. Actually, we, you know, uh, you know, we abstract the catalog services, you know, into a separate service internally. And there is a, also a young resource manager. You can configure in a uh, high availability way. So this is a typical deployment of the Hawk cluster. And uh, this slide shows the Hawk and the high level architecture. You can see that from the top side is uh, components in the master node. And uh, the, client, the client can be PC or it can be GDPC or ODPC or any other applications. And uh, when a query comes, actually, you know, it first goes to the you know parser and analyzer. You know, after the parser and analyzer, we get we get a query tree. Then the query tree will pass to will be passed to the optimizer, and the optimizer will you know get an optimal plan you know for the for the for the query. You know, after the query after the query plan is calculated, then actually we uh, it goes to the dis, uh, uh, dispatcher. So from the dispatcher side, actually, it first will get the resources available in the uh, system and uh, so it goes to actually if it uh, you know run together with young and that actually you know it will go through the resource manager and <coughs> actually through the resource broker and get the resources from the uh, young side then actually uh, obtain the resources or returning resources are completely dynamic that is according to the query cost and after we get the resources we know actually uh, well, the resources are available. Well, we should execute the query. Then we dispatch the query to the segments to execute. You can see that um, on the bottom side, it says, uh, you know, the segments node, segment host. And on each segment host, there is a physical segment. You can uh, look at this physical segment just like a single node database. And uh, actually, you know, during the execution, you know, we study the multiple, multiple, you know, virtual segments on each physical segment. You can see that, for example, you know, if we have a big query, then actually we have 1,000 nodes, but we want the a degree of petroleum uh, to be, you know, 10,000. So what can we do? You know, we have only 10,000, uh, nodes, right? <coughs> now, you know, here, how can start actually 10 virtual segments on each node, so it can achieve, you know, 10k actually degree of parallelism to execute the query in, in massive parallel way. Parallel way. And uh, so, you know, be, uh, among, uh, you know, between the seg uh, physical segments, there is an interconnect. Actually, uh, for interconnect, actually, you can see that, you know, actually, we implement, the, we have two uh, interconnect implementations. One is TCP-based, and the other is UDP-based. You, uh, you may think that why we need a UDP, you know, interconnect. Actually, uh, in the early version, actually, we have a TCP-based internet. Finally, we find that, find that actually TCP has a lot of limitations. And uh, actually, you can think that, you know, uh, if we have one thousand node, and uh, each node will communicate with each other, other node, then actually, on each node, there will be one million connections, right? One thousand node, each node will communicate with each other. Then, on each node, is one million connections. If one node has one million connections, actually the node will start. You know, you cannot even log into the node. So it's TCP has a kind of scalability bottleneck. So we developed the UDP based interconnect you know, to solve this issue. So this is uh, actually interconnect is uh, you know the main you know things you know for the parallelism in the in the database. And uh, here actually uh, for the external system actually we use. Uh, uh, PXF, that is pivotal extension framework, you know, to uh, connect to external system and uh, to access data. For example, it can be Azure, it can be Oracle, it can be any other databases and or other, any other, you know, systems. So this is the overall architecture of Hub, and uh, this is the basic query execution flow. So after the query comes, actually, you first go to the parser. You know, after the parser, we get a pass tree, and uh, the pass tree actually, you know, is given to, you know, here I omitted another component that's analyzer. Actually, the pass tree is given to the analyzer. Analyzer will, uh, you know, 
do some semantic analysis. For example, you will check the, you know, whether the, uh, uh, whether the columns access in the query UCL, and you can also do some other semantic analysis. After the, after the analyze this, actually, uh, the plan will be generated by the planner. And the plan will be given to a dispatcher, and the dispatcher will work with the resource manager. And to get the resources, then actually the dispatcher will start the processes on different nodes. Then actually, the, uh, actually we also slice the uh, plan. That is, if the plan, actually a plan can be sliced into you know, several slices. You know, uh, and each slice will be you know, uh, dispatched to the you know, query executor for execution. This is the overall execution. <coughs> All right, so this, uh, I just introduced, uh, you know, the overall architecture and uh, the, actually how the query works. And uh, he, here is the hog status, including the history and the current status. In 2011, actually, we did a prototype, and at that time, actually, Hadoop uh, just become very popular. And uh, a lot of enterprises began to use, began using Hadoop as their centralized, you know, uh, storage system. So. You know, at that time, Pivotal has uh, you know Green Plum database. So, and this is an MPV database. You know, it is it is extremely faster than actually Hadoop solutions, for example, Hive and Peak and other solutions. So, and uh, but it, it has you know it has a shell nothing you know storage architecture. So we think you know how can we combine you know Hadoop with MPV database together? So this is why we started the prototype. So at that time we call it. We call the prototype as you know, Green Plum database on HDFS. So after the prototype, actually, you know, we uh, developed the upper version. So upper version is uh, tried by a lot of customers. So after the customer tried that, actually, they compiled the, they did a lot of benchmark and uh, compared the performance between Hawk and uh, and the Hive. So at that time, actually, Hawk is actually is four <coughs> times faster than Hive. So actually, it promoted actually Hawk as a product, you know, uh, so we, in 2013, uh, actually, we released the Hawk 1.0. Actually, in order, 1.0 phase, actually, we changed the architecture a lot. Since, actually, now we have a kind of centralized storage on HDFS. So a lot of things in the uh, traditional MP MPV database is not necessary. So we changed the uh, uh, transaction mechanism, we changed, we changed the fault tolerance mechanism, and to make it more like Adobe system. And uh, in 2013 to uh, 2014, actually, we uh, have a lot of minor releases. We added uh, Kerberos, we added Packet Spot, we added a lot of other you know, features. And in 2015, it goes to Apache. And uh, currently, you can see from the Apache side, actually, it's up to a lot better. And 2016, actually, it's very close to, to up to a lot GA. And uh, this is the features, uh, uh, you know, that to be released in Hop 2.0 GA, and it's about more than 10 plus features. The most significant feature, you know, is about the elastic uh, execution runtime. That is, we can, you know, virtual segments can be studied on, you know, multiple virtual segments can be studied on each, you know, physical segment. That is, you can, you know, we can start the, you know, we can execute query according to the cost. That is studied as many as what your segments according to the query cost. The other is about resource management. Now we still have three layer resource management. We support dynamic expansion. We support the new dispatcher for the elastic long time. We support the performance model and we also you know, consolidated the storage model. And we also supported the block level storage. And we also have our HDFS catalog cache to accelerate, accelerate you know, HDFS uh, you know, accesses. And we also support edge catalog integration. That is, you can query the tables in edge catalog very easily. All right. So finally, I uh, I'll take up maybe three minutes to uh, uh, about uh, you know how how do we you know how can we contribute to the Apache Hawk? This you know to contribute to Hawk uh, is you know uh, you can you know for example you can add some documentation stuff you can. Edit the wikis, you can report some bugs, and you know, can provide fixes for the bugs, and you can also, provide, you know, can also develop some features. Here is the website and the wiki and the reports and the JIRAs. And the mailing list, you have, if you have any questions or 
have any ideas, you can send it to our demo mailing list or user mailing list. So this is a code contribution process. It's very, uh, it's very easy. You know, you just need to start a Jira actually, fork a GitHub repo, then clone your report to local, then actually you create a feature branch. Then after you finish your feature, you just you know start a pull request. The committers will work with you on the, you know, to pull your code in. So details can be found on this wiki page. And uh, there are a lot of interesting areas that you know you guys may uh, consider you know contributing. So currently we are also working on these areas. So uh, indexes are very important for you know point of queries. Now we are working on the indexes. And uh, for non heap tables, you know we also want to support update delete. You know you know Hadoop is kind of a pan only file system. You cannot do update and delete on the file. On the on the on the uh, on the system, so you want to support update delete on um, append only tables. The, you know it's kind of challenging. So currently we are working on this too. And the snapshot geo replication and integrated with other ecosystem, for example Spark, Flink, and any other ecosystem is also an interesting area. And uh, we can also enhance. We have you know enhancing you know compiling and building you know different platforms is also an interesting area. So this is the best step to build and set up. Due to the time limit, time limit, I will skip this. So this is the references of this talk. You can see, you know, a lot of materials, documents on our website, and you can also uh, take a look at our uh, publications on some research, uh, uh, you know, conferences. For example, Sigma conference, VLDB conferences. All right. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions coming? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, just a question. When would you suggest someone uses something like Green Plum versus when would you suggest they use Hawk? So, actually, you know, typically, you know, uh, if customers are using Hadoop, we suggest actually you should use Hawk since Hawk is kind of native C engine on Hadoop. If you use actually that will help see, you know, solution, it's better to use green plum Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Is it an added layer that can be deployed over a pre-running uh, Hadoop file system? Or uh, meaning can, can the request be launched or, uh, uh, by connecting to a, a, a running Hadoop system? So currently, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's very, you know, hot is very independent. So you can deploy it to your existing like DFS or Young, or, you know, can use Amari. Yep, right here. And, and, in what way is it different from Presto, for instance? So Presto, actually, it's also a SQL Hadoop solution. You know, if you can, you know, you know if you compare hot with Presto, actually, you know, there are a lot of benefits, you know, over it. For example, the SQL compliance, you know, Presto is, you know, if you run GPCGS or, you know, if you run GPCH, you know, you, you need to rewrite a lot, almost all the queries. And uh, and from performance side, actually, Hub is much faster. And uh, from <coughs> other side, actually, you know, for, for example, you know, integration with, you know, existing Hadoop ecosystem, Hub is, is, also, is also better. For example, integration with Young and integration with Envari stuff, you know, it's much easier for Hub. Know, to work with existing uh, system. So about Metasport, it's different from Pipe Metasport. Huh? You, you have a specific Metasport. Uh, so for storage side, actually, you know, we have some native storage for Mac. It's also open source. You can use it as, you know, for example, you can use MapGuse or Spark to access the uh, storage for Mac. It is a kind of only for Mac. And the other is a packet. This is, this is open source command. It's not private. No, it's not private. Metastore. Oh, Metastore. Yeah. Oh, the Metastore currently is on master. It's on local disk. It's specific. Um, it's not using the high one. Uh, you can use the high one. Actually, we support the edge catalog integration. You can use edge catalog to access high catalog. And uh, for, for for our own metadata, actually, currently it's on local disk. It's just like Postgres catalog. 
Any, any more questions? What about um, accessing the data? Uh, the security wise, uh, should, should it be uh, one of the cases yeah, or uh, can it be also done via host? Can I say it again? So the, uh, the data, uh, access to the data, uh -huh. can be managed in, in host or uh, should be managed with the uh, folder in, uh, in HDFS? Actually, the data is on HDFS. So actually, you know, if other system you know, want to access the data, you know, written by hub, it can uh, access directly on HDFS. So it's, it's you know, it's a shared storage, actually not mandated by hub. Only the catalog is mandated by hub. Security uh, security with part <coughs> security with part Kerberos and any you know. Anybody else? Any more questions? What about uh, ORC file format support? Do you want to support the uh, ORC or uh, just parquet? Uh, yes, it's kind of in plan. Actually, you know, for ORC file, you can use PXF. Actually, you know, you kind of external tables for accessing now. And we also, you know, plan to support it just like a natural storage. This is in the roadmap. All right. Thank you so much, Daniel.